quick report. Um, this week we were very happy to bring on interim general counsel, uh, Ross Trindle of the firm Alshire and Winder. Um, they serve many cities and special districts um, in that capacity, and some of their attorneys on staff were actually part of uh, the formation of the city of Goleta and were there for a few years. So they're knowledgeable about the area. We're really uh, grateful to be receiving service from them. As mentioned before, on May 30th, we had our public safety town hall. We're really grateful for the attendance of Supervisor Hartman, uh, the Foot Patrol, and UCPD. A lot of residents came out and uh, expressed a lot of really good ideas and genuine concerns, and I'm excited to see how we can move forward on that. Um, additionally, we've had great success on our internship program this quarter. We've had <coughs> three students, all in paid internships, helping us with everything from presentations to communications and lots of great individual research projects as well. Uh, we have two more interns selected to participate in our program this summer as the other two graduate. Um, and then also we've initiated our discussions with the office of the chancellor and the executive vice chancellor on um, how we are going to work together to fund services and also initial administrative needs of the district. Uh, they're going very well so far and uh, we report back at our general board meetings on how those go. Um, and public safety was our first initial uh, service discussion we've had, but we're also looking to speak about tenant mediation soon uh, because it is a, a timely issue with uh, some changes that are happening right now. Our next uh, regular meeting is on June 20th, and we'll be happy to see any who are interested in attending at that meeting. And uh, now, Jay. Oh, thank you, Ryan. If I can sit there. If you haven't signed in to the check sheet, it's important for the tribes and their data that we all check in. All right, so one of the powers of the Isla Vista Community Services District is to fund a municipal advisory council. Um, it is not directly to construct a municipal advisory council. That is something that will have to be done by the Board of Supervisors. A municipal advisory council is an advisory body that can go to the Board of Supervisors on behalf of our community. Um, it would meet in our community. Um, and it would be able to um, not make decisions, but hopefully the Board of Supervisors would um, care a lot about what the Municipal Advisory Council says and um, take that heavily into consideration when they make decisions about laws or about funding and things in our area. Um, Isla Vista used to have a Municipal Advisory Council a long time ago, the Isla Vista Community Council, um, which existed for somewhere around 15 years um, before it got defunded by the various entities that it put together. So um, currently, um, there was a pledge from the 3rd District Office for $3,000 initially to um, fund the Municipal Advisory Council, although there's been an update to that, but now the funds have been kind of unlocked so that we could use them for other purposes. Could, um, could, uh, they were never locked. I was asked if I would fund that. I said, yes, I have a small budget, I would. Then I said, however you want to spend the money, you, may, you, you all can have money. Okay, uh, and so, but so, but so, before at least our perception was that the money was for that, and now our perception is that the money can be used for other things. Um, however, at the meeting where this was discussed, I was directed to meet with stakeholders and discuss um, how MAC might happen, um, and uh, like particularly how it might be structured. Um, and um, what I have been hearing from the last like two years of talking about this are three high-level thoughts. Um, one of which is that the CSD itself becomes a municipal advisory council. Um, this is a model that is sometimes called a county town, um, where you have one, uh, one body that is exer exerting the powers of a MAC and the CSD, um, and possibly even an area planning commission, which is another one of our powers to fund. Um, and then that, um, that entity essentially now is acting a little bit like a city council. Um, another possibility is to um, build something similar to the Isla Vista Community Council, um, where it was a separate body that had particular um, uh, positions that, for example, a student and a business owner and um, uh, somebody from a nonprofit and things like that. Uh, and another possibility is to take this organization, the Isla Vista Community Network, and kind of upgrade it into a municipal advisory council, making it somewhat more official, more formal, um, and, uh, and, and then having it provide official reports to the Board of Supervisors. Um, but these, there could be other options that people have not kind of come up with in these high-level options. And now I'm turning it to you. I'm just interested in hearing what are your thoughts on this. Um, does anyone have any feedback on this? And then I will consolidate that and bring it to my board as a report. But we will also then be having a public meeting about that. Um, so you could also bring your feedback there. Thank you. 
Jay, I'm so sorry. I was signing the thing and not paying attention. The second one you talked about after something similar to the Isla Vista Community Council, um, where there was like a separate entity that um, had maybe particular positions, such as a student representative, a representative from a business, a representative from a nonprofit, a representative from. Um, so. Thank you. The exact model you were talking about. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Pekin model. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, anybody have any comments or questions? Or? That's unusual. <laughs> I, I, from the perspective of the Board of Supervisors, I guess a question immediately arises. What if there's conflicting advice from the CSD board and the MAC? Uh, if, if the county board, or, or would the MAC advise the CSD, or uh, I mean, or both, or uh, I so, okay. so uh, one the idea there um, is that there are multiple special districts already in our area, um, and you could expect to, for example, have a representative from the CSD on the map, a representative from the park district on the map. Um, the uh, um, they, they could be in an advisory position towards the MAC. Uh, the, the CSD has um, specific powers, and a MAC, in a sense, has a much wider purview. Uh, and, and a lot of the powers that we have, or as most special districts have, are almost more like delegations from the county, whereas this is something where the county wants to put together a, an ordinance um, that affects how, um, how the community will work. Well, those ordinances and laws are something the CSD just kind of can't do. Uh, and uh, are, are usually about powers that we don't have. Um, even, even law enforcement, we can contract for additional police protection services, but we do not directly work on law enforcement issues. And so law enforcement ordinances are something that MAC would be bringing suggestions to you on. But I hope, I hope that answers the kind of conflict questions. But. So sorry, just to clarify, what is like, the, what would you say like the, the role of like this, the MAC council, like, what exactly could like some things that they would do. So currently, if you when the board of supervisors wants to make a decision about Isla Vista, um, we have to figure out when the meetings of the board of supervisors will be. It's a meeting that lasts from nine in the morning until arbitrarily late in the afternoon. Um, the uh, agenda is kind of flexible, so you don't know exactly when it's going to happen. So you end up just having to show up for a long period of time. Um, you end up getting your uh, three minutes of commentary on, a, and then there's the high level decision that ends up getting made. Um, instead, we can have a meeting about that issue here, one that is not just a community thing that you know we come together and then we just send people to go speak during three minutes rapidly over there. But we could meet about that topic and then have an official presentation um, as, as that group to the Board of Supervisors. They could allocate us a 10-minute presentation like they do to a department when the department gives a presentation on a matter. Um, and so this, this specific issues, um, things that have come up I know recently have been uh, modifications to noise ordinances, um, modifications to, um, uh, if we could construct a parking district actually for the CSD, but things that have come up recently are things like um, large vehicle parking in the area, um, trying to- Large make, buildings? Oh yeah, um, uh, uh, yeah, planning related issues currently until, until such time as we maybe plan. one day have an area planning commission. Yeah. Again, actually I know it's been a lot of time thinking about this stuff. So. Yeah. Master plan, things to do with zoning as far as the bigger buildings that have come through. Um, traffic flowing, Halloween, Deltopia. I mean, there's a handful of things that we can show up as individuals in the County Board of Supervisors, but if we could discuss it amongst the community for a month or so and actually really hash things out, then we can be a little more coherent, I believe, when we, when we do show up at the county. And again, something CSD could definitely do things on parking, um, but you guys wouldn't really be able to do anything on master plan. So we, we could talk about things related to parks and recreations and programming, but, you know, so there's different agencies, but I, I've always pictured this as, as all the different stakeholders sitting, I mean, similar to this. It's similar to this, but my issues with this group are one, it's in the middle of the afternoon. Two, I think this group functions really well with what it does, and, and, um, I don't know if you guys really want to take on tackling, you know, do we want to do the series of meetings over noise ordinances inside of this group. So, so, you know, again, that was kind of what I pictured. It's just an opportunity for the community to have a lot more information. And then, you know, the county can give reports on what they know about, you know, use master plan as a, as a topic, or even the 
love safety or something. We could have people come in from different departments, give us information, and then we could start to come to some kind of cohesive idea of, of how the community might want to approach the Board of Supervisors on things. Two thoughts. Joan, I got it. <laughs> um, two, two thoughts. One is that that's a, a lot of information to digest, and you speak very quickly. So I think what I'm understanding you to say is what should a proposed MAC look like? Is that? That is my question to you, yes. Okay. Uh, and a direct question might be, do you want to be it? Right. No, I but, there, but there doesn't have to be one, though. Right. It doesn't, or yeah, or a yeah, proposed or, MAC so, is none. So my, my two thoughts two things that would be helpful. Um, one is, is to take a, a look at, we've got this group, we've got the Ivy Community Services District, we've got the IV, whatever that other group is that's meeting. The Corporate District Corporation. Uh, I've, the got, corporation. Oh, I've got this list already made. And, and so I, I'm sure that the list is there, but what are each of their functions and how do they overlap? Because I think in order to ascertain what would a MAC do that's different from the other groups, it'd be helpful to know, to get that in writing. And then also, how could a MAC be formed? Like you, you, you put out various options that maybe a rep from this group comes in and another one comes in, or maybe it's formed completely differently than that. Like I, I feel like I can't give you feedback because I don't know enough about it yet. So I'm actually, I would be able to answer that, that first question immediately. Um, as okay. far as how, is, how it would it be structured, that's actually essentially the, I'm not pitching anything, nor has the CSD put, took, had any conversation about pitching anything. The idea is to go to the community uh, and see what they would be interested in. And, and, that's, and even there, like the high level, the, those high level three categories, um, uh, I, mean, I guess a big reason why I'm here is, um, is this group interested in or prepared to do it, uh, and, and or would you prefer to see the CSD or a separate construction entity do it? Um, you, 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 uh, there occasionally is conversation, well, you already have the IDCN, certainly they'll just do it. And it's like, well, no one's ever asked them, do they want to do it? And <laughs> so hopefully, you know. It, it seems to me the only way this group could do it, it would be to form like subcommittees to tackle the different things. We couldn't really do it within this format, I don't think. Personally, Jay, yeah, a question for clarification. And if, sorry to jump in here. Um, just like more about what the MAC is and what function it would serve. Um, I apologize, I didn't pay enough attention, I guess, to the student governance meetings we were having for two years, but when it came to MAC. Um, what, from what you said, it sounds like um, kind of they would serve as an intermediary between community and the Board of Supervisors at the county. Um, so the, all right, uh, Howard, I, this was a report that was done on, by the California, uh, thank you, municipal advisory councils appear to me. County government is often unable to deliver a level of service equivalent to that to which cities offer to unincorporated areas. Some observers believe that all urban areas should be incorporated, but it will be a long time if ever before this goal is achieved. Moreover, many areas requiring urban services may never find incorporation economically or politically feasible, an alternative is necessary. Municipal advisory councils appear to offer one such alternative. Unlike most groups that advise county governments on specific issues, such as countywide planning or health, a MAC has the freedom to address all issues affecting its community. This so-called county town can bring a better understanding of community needs than a county could otherwise possibly acquire, and can provide a community with an effective form of government short of actual incorporation. Moreover, a MAC, empowered to advise on a whole range of local issues, can provide the coordination necessary to make community-level government more efficient and less expensive. As it currently stands, what ends up happening again is that um, we will have individual meetings with Gina. Gina will come and hear us at this group. Um, then this information will be debriefed to, for example, Joan. There will be a meeting at the Board of Supervisors um, where then the other supervisors are often hearing this information for the first time. We will, as members of the public, go and provide our three minutes of input. Um, and that is the official mechanism by which the 4th District and 5th District Supervisor hear about our needs. Whereas this would be a group that essentially is, you can almost look at it as a, um, a committee that is formed by the Board of Supervisors to look at issues specific to Isla Vista. Um, but that's not a committee made up of supervisors. It's a committee made up of people appointed by the supervisors by some process, whether it be an election, whether it be by a um, by fee at the CSD, by vote of, the, of just them. 
Um, and then this group will meet here, come up, talk about issues, and report back to there. And I hope that also answers your question how this is different than, for example, the IBCDC, which right. is a nonprofit. It, it, it does, but here's my suggestion is that it, the meeting has gone over and it's a bit overwhelming. Is it possible that we could get some things in writing beforehand and really think about it and put you at the top of the agenda for our next meeting? I, like, I don't know about everyone else, but like I'm feeling, report for you, I'm sure. feeling like I have to leave, and I don't. I don't think we can give you an answer right now. Kirby's not looking for. Oh, I don't know. Were you looking for? Well, he says input. Oh. But yeah, I was looking yeah, at that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the. the, the uh, you, even just like feelings about, I mean, like I, I've heard a little bit from it, like Rodney pointed out something about this group becoming it and that. Um, but yeah, I'd be happy to, to go back and put together a written document describing all this, all the background of these other organizations. And I mean, would anyone else you. find that helpful before we yes? Yeah. I'll also be going around and having some individual meetings with people. So. You're definitely one of the people that are going to be right. I'm not trying to, to put you off. I just, yeah. I feel not like I, I, I want to really fully understand what. That's probably a good idea because a lot of people have already left the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Want to come uh, back next month? Will you put the what articulate in the document so we can put together uh, the key difference between what a MAC and the C because the CSP does exist, and a lot of the formation documents sort of were you know one or the other as filling the need that Ida Vista had, and so I know they can exist together. So we'll sort of frame that, but existing, um, like what need would it fill if the CSD can or doesn't fill? I can provide that context. Um, I, mean, I will say that the reason why we were given the power to fund a municipal advisory council is that they are not exclusionary. So, and that people did feel that this would be an interesting thing for the CSD to either become or to provide. So. Right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.